really thank God for the grace yeah, yeah. that he has given us, that he has reigned on our lives. Yeah. We thank God for his grace, for his mercy, for everything that he has done for us. Amen. Yes. It is truly good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes, yes, yes. Sincerely, I thank Pastor Darian, uh, wherever he is, for this opportunity to preach. <laughs> this gospel message. Uh, this week has been one for the books, huh? Amen. And while I was in prayer, uh, this scripture came to mind, and it is my sincere prayer that this word will encourage us all for the days to come. Yes. Amen. If you would turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 9, and we'll start at verse 10. Acts chapter 9, verse 10, and we'll conclude at verse 18. I'll give you a minute get there. Amen. Amen. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here am I, Lord. And so the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarshish, behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come in and put his hands on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many things about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here, he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he, had, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received sight at once and he rose and was baptized. Amen. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. For the time that we have together, I want to remind each and every one of us to stay in position. All right. All right. Stay in position. All right. Two months had not fully passed since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ when a change had come. On the day of Pentecost, the promised gift of the Holy Spirit empowered 150 to preach the gospel, and the outcome was 3,000. Right. And the 3,000 went home, and they preached and spread the message of the cross, and the early church began to grow in great numbers. The realization that the presence of the Lord was no longer confined to a building, to one people, to one city to one occasion, it caused a stir among the religious leaders, oh. the Pharisees. Now, whether the Pharisees saw the early adopters of Christianity or early adopters of the gospel as just Jesus fanatics or, or if they just called them followers of the way we know that they believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and they were compelled to tell others about it. Right. All right. The Pharisees, you see, they had a problem on their hands. All right. As strict Jewish believers, their entire cultural, national, and religious identity was tied inseparably to their worship to God. Yeah. Right. The God of their worship was stationary mm -hmm. and fixed and exclusive. See, this 
God that they serve, it wasn't for everybody. Right, but when Jesus died on the cross, Stop. Stop. when he died, the, 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 the veil of the temple was torn in two, and we had access to a heavenly father that surpassed all the law. Yeah, yeah. See, what they didn't recognize was that God loved everybody. See, he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Yes. The Pharisees felt that if you didn't follow the law, then you were a problem. If you didn't keep up with the traditions, then you had a problem. Uh, then you were a problem. And, and if, you, if you just didn't keep things the way that they were, then you were a problem. See, they began to persecute the Christians, those who followed Christ. And at this point, they were becoming outnumbered. Yeah. They were becoming outnumbered because the message was being spread faster than they anticipated. And how could they help retain control except by instilling fear? Wow. Yeah. They persecuted the believers of Christ. See, the, the believers were beaten. They were imprisoned and they were stoned. See, this is where we were introduced to Saul of Tarshish. All right. As he presided over the stoning of a well-known disciple named Stephen. See, we all know, we know, come we, on, we know Saul. Come on. He was circumcised on the eighth day. Yes. Yeah. From the nation of Israel. He yeah. is from yeah. the tribe of Benjamin. He right. is a Hebrew of Hebrews and a Pharisee yeah. of Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah. He is a fierce protector of the law. Yes. And see, he made it his personal business. He had a notorious search for those who were believers of Christ. He wanted to imprison right. right. them. He was their gateway to persecution. Uh -huh. He was their gateway to their personal hell. Right. Do you know what they did to Christians that were in prison? Uh, they were fed to lions and to dogs. Yeah. They were starved and they were ripped from their families. Oh, yeah. 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 And it, it all started with Saul. Can you just imagine why they ran for him? Uh -huh. They ran away. From him, and while he was on his way to Damascus, uh, while he was there on his search for the Christians, uh, he was apprehended by the Lord, and he was set apart to spread the gospel in which he persecuted. And see, while on his way to Damascus, there in Damascus, we have Ananias. Ananias. Ananias was aware of the persecution of his brothers and Jeez. sisters. He was aware of the threat of gathering. Ananias was aware of the possibility of not being able to make it home. He was aware yes. of the circumstances that faced those who believed and called on the name of the Lord, but he faced everything that he faced. He still had a nevertheless. Wow. Yeah. 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 Nevertheless, he yeah. was in position. That's it. He That's stayed it. in position. See, Ananias, he stayed in position to hear God. Yeah. He stayed in position so that his heart was in position. And he stayed in position of obedience. Why? Because a change is coming. Yes. Yes. We have many things in common with Ananias. See, Ananias lived in Damascus, which was 100 miles away from the city of Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. He yeah. did not live close to the temple, mm -hmm. but he kept up with his own personal fellowship with right, God. Right. Mm -hmm. The building did not secure him. It was his relationship. Yeah. Yeah. He took delight in communing with God on a personal level. Yes. When no one was watching, he was praying. Right, right, right. I can only imagine that when no one else was around him, he was singing his own song. He was his own choir. He was his own psalmist, the musician and the dancer. He preached his own service. He was his own person that he just, he, he encouraged himself. He had personal relationship with God. And when no one else was around, he positioned himself to, to hear from God. Right. And how else can one hear from God except to be able to recognize his voice? Yeah. And Ananias took delight in the word of God, and on his law did he meditate day and night. Yeah. While stories 
of Saul was going around, and while he heard the stories from many people, he shut it all out. All right. He blocked it all off, and he believed that if he if he believed that if God Himself did not intervene, he believed that with all the persecution that was going on, that there there had to be a purpose for it all. Yeah. See, looking at the media coverage this week. I saw how the nation burned in anger at the social and systematic injustice of our black and brown brothers and sisters. Come on, and, on, Darian, and I said, brother, how how can we preach? How do one how does one preach in such a climate? And in so many words, he reminded me, he said, stay in position. Come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay yeah. in position. Yeah. Yeah. We have been at home, church, for the past 12 or 11 weeks, excuse me, 11 weeks on stay-at-home order. Uh, many of us have not been able to come and convene in worship, but allow me to remind some and inform others that the building does not secure the relationship with God. We not have a personal relationship with God. It is our personal relationship that holds us together. Yeah. While we may miss the fellowship of the saints and while we miss calling on each yeah. other in sanctuary yeah. and hugging on each other, God is calling us back to our first love. Yeah. Where we where we get back to the to the matters that, that matter the most. Yeah. And when we are able to get back into position to hear from God. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. It doesn't matter what the noise is around you. It doesn't matter what CNN, MSNBC, no. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what's on social media. It doesn't matter what your mama, your daddy, your niece, your aunt. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Get back into position to hear from God. But thus said the Lord, and I want to let you know that if you take a minute, you will be able to hear from the Lord, and He will let you know that a change is coming. We don't know how it's coming. We don't know when it's coming. We don't know what it means it's coming. But we know that a change is coming. Something has got to give. Something has got to change. Are you listening? A change is coming. And it doesn't matter what circumstances you face. It doesn't matter what it is that you're going through. Please let me remind you, church, that a change is coming. And we have got to get into position to hear from the Lord. Let it free. That's it. Get in position and stay there. Get into position, church, and stay there. See, when the Lord called and came to Ananias in a, in a vision, uh -huh. he called him by name. Preach, girl. He, he called him by name in this right here, church. It made my heart so glad because it's just a simple reminder. It's just a simple reminder that God knows oh, us God. each by name. Yeah. Yeah. He knows exactly where we are, church. Yeah. He knows yeah. how to reach us in our yeah. distress. He, yeah. he knows what city yeah. we are in. He knows <laughs> what street we are on. He, he knows what house we're sitting in. He, he knows what church we are in. He knows the concerns of our hearts. He knows the, the anxieties that we are facing. He knows. He knows. He knows us each. He knows us each. He knows us each. So while we are in position to hear God, I want to remind you that he knows where you are. Yes. And he sees you. He has not forgotten glory. He has not forgotten about you. He knows the pains of your heart. He knows uh, everything that keeps you up at night. He knows every tear that falls from your heart. He knows exactly what it is yes. that you are going through. My God, he is Emmanuel. Yes. He is God with us. He has never left you, nor has he forsaken you. He knows where you are. Yeah. He knows you by name. And the Lord said to Ananias, go to a go to a street called Straight. Tell the story. Tell the story. Go to the house of Judas uh, and look for a man named Saul. Yeah. Right. Can you imagine how, how Ananias felt? Yes, Lord. Can you imagine yeah. what Ananias was thinking? Uh -huh. 
Uh, and Ananias said, now, now Lord, hold on now. I, I've heard many things about this man. All right. I've heard how he has harmed your saints in Jerusalem. Uh, you want me right now uh, uh, to leave the confines of the comfort of our sweet communion to actively seek out somebody and pray for the one who is carrying the papers, who has the license, the one who has the orders and the authority to in prison. You want me right now, your beloved servant, to pray for the one who has been breathing out murderous threats against your people. You want me, my God. Yeah. To, to pray for the one who has been persecuting your people. Can you imagine uh, how Ananias felt? And church, uh, we have, this is why right here, uh, we have to remember uh, that this is why we need our hearts to stay in Come position. On, uh, it is our hearts to stay yeah. in position after oh, yeah. the Lord has uh, spoken to us and he has given us instruction. We have to make sure that our heart is pure. Yeah. We have to make sure that we're moving with pure motives. Yeah. Can you imagine how Ananias felt? Uh, but Ananias, he, he really did have valid concerns. Right, right. Uh, uh, God is asking him to move with a concern and possibly a broken heart. Yeah. See, his fellow brothers and sisters uh, that put their hope in the same God as Ananias, uh, they have been persecuted because of Saul. Yeah. Uh, and that concerned his heart, that, that possibly broke his heart. Tell the his story. fellow tell brothers it. and sisters who believed like him, uh -huh. who, who trusted God like him, yeah. who wanted to spread the gospel like him, who looked and probably lived like him. Yeah. They were persecuted and that can break your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Can you un right. and, and can you just imagine how how Ananias felt? I mean, Lord, what do you mean? You want me to pray for those that that persecute me? Yeah. See, wait, now I remember. I, I read my Bible some time ago, and this morning, and and this week, and it says that we are to pray for those who persecute us. Yes. Yes. Now, in my study, for some reason, it just didn't hit me that uh, that that we are to pray for those that actively persecute us. Oh, no. bring it, bring it. Saul was actively persecuting Come on. Come on, Christians. Uh, I, 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 it bothered me, God. It really bothered me. How am I supposed to pray for those who are actively persecuting my brothers and my sisters? People that look like me, that live like me, that don't work like me, that drive cars like me, that run in neighborhoods like me, that Walk in neighborhoods like me. You yeah. want me to yeah. pray for those that actively persecute yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta stay in position. Yeah. 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 You gotta stay in position. Yeah. Active persecution. All right. That bothers me, Lord. I mean, this is why we have to pray for those who wear the badge. We have to pray for our police officers and pray for our president. We have to pray for the agitators and the ones that pull the trigger. We have to pray for those on our job. We, we have to pray for the doctors and the lawyers. We have to pray for those in positions of authority. We have to pray for our husbands and our wives and our children. We have to pray for each other, church. We have got to pray. We have got to stay in position. Yeah. To keep our hearts in position, we need prayer. Yeah. We have got to pray. And if our hearts in this time have slipped into anger, go ahead and realign yourself. Yeah. 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 And get back into position. Yeah. Right? And take your rightful place. Yeah. And pray. Yeah. And the weapons of our warfare are our God. That's it. But Almighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds, Come on, casting down argument in every high place right. and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, but bring every, every thought into captivity to obedience 
of Christ. We have got to stay in position. Our right. hearts, church. Yeah, yeah. Our hearts, church, have to be in position. See, the Lord responded to Ananias, you know, and he said, Ananias, Ananias, you don't know this, but Saul is chosen. Yeah, come on. Right. Ananias, uh, he doesn't know it yet, but he is a willing vessel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The faith that he believed to be stationary and exclusive, uh, he will be responsible for uh, pushing it to the nations of the Gentiles. He will, he will bear the name, he will bear my name, and, and he will he will uh, preach the gospel before kings, and he will spread the gospel again before the children of Israel. So and, uh, Ananias, don't, don't you worry. Uh, I will show him many things that he must suffer for my name. Right, for my name's sake. See, the Lord reminded Ananias, I have a plan. Yeah, there you go. The church... Uh, I want to remind you that, that God has a plan, uh -huh. and he's going to use what we least expect yeah. to push his plan. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would have been born in a manger? Yeah. Who would have thought that when we needed a Savior, he would come riding in on a donkey? Yeah. Who would have thought that our Redeemer would die a scandalous death yeah. on the cross? See, God has a way of raising their kings on oh, yeah. sheep. He has a way of calling children at a young age yeah. to lead nations. Yeah. He has a way of using pandemic to strengthen our personal relationship <laughs> with God. He has a way of bringing unjust and causing a change. Yeah. The Lord has a plan. Yeah. See, the Lord is calling for Ananias to trust him. Yeah. He is calling for the church to trust him. Yeah. See, we are to trust the Lord with yeah. all our hearts yeah. and lean not into yeah. our own understanding. We need now. to acknowledge him in all of our ways, and he will. He will. will. Yes. Our yes. We yes. have got to stay in position. Our hearts need to stay in position. Uh, what is the position of your heart? Come on. Ah. Can you trust the Lord even when it doesn't make sense? Yeah. Can you trust the Lord even with the diagnosis? Can you trust the Lord when you're trying to find the money? Can you trust the Lord when you feel like time is slipping away from you? Can you trust the Lord and can you trust him even when you can't trace him? Scales fell off his eyes. He got up and ate, mm -hmm. and he began to do the work. Yeah. And we right. thank God for Brother Saul. Yeah. We thank right. God for Brother Paul. Yeah. Because he spread the gospel. He he worked the plan. Come That's on. what he was supposed to do. There you go. See, and let me remind you that had to be hard for Ananias. Yeah. That yeah. really had to be hard for for Ananias. Uh. uh but, but allow me to, to speak something that, that even when we are obedient to God, that does not mean that we don't have feelings about it. Come on. Say it. Come on. We, still, we still have feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. But we got to put our feelings aside. Yeah. You have got to swallow your pride and, and push your ego to the side, and you have to go forth. Yeah. You may not like them, but you still have to be obedient. Yeah. You may not fully respect them, but you still got to be obedient. Yeah. You may not fully trust. 
trust them, but you still have to be oh, obedient. Yeah. You have to move in obedience yeah. even with a broken heart. Yeah. Even when you are mourning. Even when you are broke. Yeah. Even when it's hard. Yeah. You have to be obedient. Yeah. You have to be obedient yes. in sickness, in health, in mourning. Be obedient to God yes. because a change is coming. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. A change is coming, and it, and it may be difficult, but it's not impossible, right. because with God, all things are possible. Yes. So Saul got up, and we thank God for Saul. Yes, Lord. He did the work. He pushed forward. Paul went, and he went on to three missionary journeys, and he spread the gospel. He did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. But if it had not been for Ananias, if we did not have Ananias, mm -hmm. if we didn't have someone in place to hear from God, mm -hmm. if we didn't have someone there with their heart in position, oh. yeah. if we didn't have someone in place of obedience, yeah. he would have stayed in the house of Judas blind and waiting. Mm. He would have stayed there blind and still considered an enemy. He would have been blind and religious. Here, Ananias was following the example of Jesus Christ. My God. When we are in position for obedience, there you go. There you we go. move with a nevertheless spirit. Jesus was praying That's in it. the garden. That's it. That's it. And he asked his father, That's it. Can you take this cup from me? Amen. This cup of judgment. Yeah. No? Okay, nevertheless. <laughs> this cup of persecution. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Nevertheless. Oh, oh, this cup of separation. Break it down. Break it down. Nevertheless. Oh, See, when we are operating in our humanity, we can find ourselves saying, God, this hurts. But nevertheless, nevertheless, I don't understand God, but nevertheless. but nevertheless, it's not clear to me what you're doing, God, but nevertheless. but nevertheless, I don't know how you're going to work it out, but nevertheless, Lord, I feel like it costs me too much, but, yeah. but nevertheless, I don't know how this level of obedience is going to pay off, but nevertheless, because my hope is built. Yes. Or oh, nothing left. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Jesus blood yeah. and righteousness. Yeah, yeah. I dare not trust the sweetest spring but yeah. only leaves yeah. on Jesus yeah. blood. Oh, I trust yeah. the solid rock I stand. Yeah. I give God a nevertheless. Yeah. Nevertheless. Yeah. Jesus gave a nevertheless. Yeah. And he still stayed in position. When we needed a savior, he stayed in position. Yeah. When we were enemies of the cross, he stayed in position. Yeah. When he, when we needed an, an, an avenue, he 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 died on the cross and he he stayed in position. Yeah. While we were yet sinners, he he stayed in position. Yeah. And Jesus, who died with sinners, yeah. who healed the sick, oh. who raised the dead, yeah. Jesus, who yeah. died and accepted. And, and, uh, a, a, a death that was completely unjust. Yeah, yeah. He stayed in position. When he was beaten all night long, he yeah. stayed in position. When he was mocked and scorned, he stayed in position. When Jesus marched from dying from a judgment hall to judgment hall, he stayed in position. When he was sentenced to death, he stayed in position. When he was carrying his own cross, he stayed in position. When he was crucified, he stayed in position. And when he died on Friday, he stayed in position. When he was put in the borrowed tomb, he stayed in position. Even when he passed, he stayed in position. Three days, he stayed there. 
position. Singers, you've got to get back into position. Mothers, you've got to get back into position. Fathers, you've got to get back into position. Children, you've got to get back into position. And call upon the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong power.
you'll do so today. We have a phone number that you can call. That number is 314-381-6787. Somebody is right by the phone right now to take your call. And I tell you, you'll get on the phone and you'll call. We have ministers here to talk with you. We have deacons here to talk with you. We can accept you in as a member of Prospect Hill. By candidate for baptism, by letter of transfer on your own testimony in Christ. Why don't you do so today? It's a mighty good time. Stay in position. Stay in position. Stretch your hands down toward the preacher. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would pour back into her what she has poured out today. We pray for her strength. We pray, oh God, that you would give her a double portion. Pour upon her a double portion of your anointing. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's offering time in the temple. Y'all was supposed to holler right there. Amen. When it comes time, listen, listen, listen. When it comes time to giving, we ought to be able to shout just as well. Amen. Because giving is a part of what we believe. Amen. It's a nevertheless. I might not have what I have, Lord, but nevertheless. Yes, indeed. I might not be able to give as good as somebody else, but nevertheless. I'm reaching down in the very belly of my purse and my wallet. And nevertheless, I'm giving because you have given so much to us. Listen, if you're at home today, you can give by the Giveify app. You can also use Cash App. And let me see if I got it right. And Cash App is Pross Hill. Amen. Dollar sign, Pross Hill. Give a five. Uh, I don't know what that one is. I, uh, Prospect Hill Baptist Church. Prospect Hill Baptist Church. There on Give a five. Amen. Wherever you are, you might be out of town, but you can still give. Amen. 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 We want to keep our church going strong. We want to keep things going well. David, I got some. Let me, let me get mine in there too. Hallelujah. You know, it's a blessing to give. It's a blessing to give. The word said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And then it's time that the people in church really get the picture. That the word of God tells us that if we give, amen, it shall be given unto us. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Amen. We bless our pastor who is trying to rest, get a little rest. He has been going full speed. And we thank God for him today. Amen. We thank God for him. Keep on resting, God. We got you back. We got you back all the way. Thank all of you for coming today. Amen. And we thank you for being here. We're not back full force yet. We might not ever get back that way. But we want to be able to do what we do for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to give to help us do that, we want you to do so. Amen. Because we're trying to get things set up that when we get back, at least to some sense of normalcy. It might not be as normal as ever, but we want to be able to do so. We want to keep this ministry going strong. Our video ministry, thank God our video ministry for our being so good at being on time and good with it. Thank our musicians. Amen. And my still Brown. He took us to old school today. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Everybody's back there. Look at that place. That was great.
This Wednesday evening at 6.30, we ask you to tune in on Facebook, prepare your homes, prepare your tables, for there is a word from the Lord. We want you to be able to, and let, let me say this, let me say this. This communion thing is serious. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, it's serious, y'all. Yes, Have your Bibles. Be ready to go to your Bibles in the Word. Be ready to study along with us. Be ready. And, and listen, start preparing yourself now. If there's anybody that you have an ought against, any unforgiveness in your heart, start right now. Pick up the phone. Call them. And get forgiveness. And forgive people. Listen. It's not about all about you forgiving, but sometimes it's about you getting forgiveness from people. Okay. Amen. So, 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 so pick up your phone. Start preparing your hearts and prepare your minds. For this Wednesday night at 6.30, we want you to tune in, have your Bibles, have your tables prepared, have your bread, have your juice, but we will commune together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nothing else, nothing else. I didn't forget anything. All right, all right, all right. Let's get ready to go. Amen. Can we stand together? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless your going in as well as your coming out. May the Lord just shine all around and about you in your community, in your home, on your job wherever you may be, that you be the light of the world, the city that sits on the hill that now cannot be here. This we pray in Jesus' name. Now may his grace, his peace, and his mercy rest, rule, and abide with you this Lord now and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace.